Hello and welcome to this sixth and final Young Person NMR Hangout. It's fantastic to be joined by Nikki Lavoy. Nikki, last but not least, <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us. Do you want to first of all uh, tell us a, a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. Um, I am Nikki. I'm an American who does market research based in Paris. I've been working in research for about seven and a half years and um, working mostly in qualitative and getting a lot more into digital and, and online methods in the last couple of years. Cool. And Eliza, do you want to tell us about yourself? Yeah, my name's Eliza and I'm working alongside Jack and Visions Live. It's an online qualitative research company and um, yeah, looking forward to the final in the series. Indeed, indeed. All right, Nikki, so I suppose we'll start quite generally. Um, you yourself as um, a young researcher, I suppose we could still class you as that, <laughs> just about. Um, I I'm, I'm know, clinging uh, to it. <laughs> <laughs> I was only kidding, of course, young researcher. But I want to know what this topic of um, young people in MR, or the lack of, um, means to you. Um, for me, I think it's a really important topic because, I mean, I obviously started in research um, about seven and a half years ago, so I was fairly young when I started. I was about 23. Um, and at the time, I started moderating, I think, maybe two or three years later, and at the time, it was like, you know, a desert landscape. It was like me and maybe a handful of other young moderators, but on the on, on the qual spectrum, there really wasn't a lot of young faces in the crowd, um, and I just kind of rolled with it, but now that I'm a bit older and um, I, I'm a bit more, you know, integrated in the industry as a whole, it's it's become really relevant um, to have young faces and, and fresh faces coming, not just um, you know people my age or whatever, but people right out of school who have new perspectives, who are into new technologies, who are into new trends. All of that kind of stuff is really important to have um, within market research, and right now we just don't have that much, so it's a topic that really hits home for me. It's a reoccurring theme, though, Nikki, of, of um, you know, we've been speaking to a lot of other professionals, and they said a lot of the problem of you know, why young people aren't attracted to the industry is because it's not, um, you know, it's not meaningful, basically, to young people, you know, it's, it, researchers don't kind of reach out and make it appropriate to this generation, so mm -hmm. what sort of ways do you think we could make it meaningful for, for young people? Um, not to sound, you know, overly superficial, but I think for a lot of um, the younger generation is more than just making it meaningful for them. It's about making it sexy. So um, I actually talked, I went and spoke two separate times at the undergraduate university where I graduated in the States um, because the professors there know that I'm actually working in a field that is relevant to my degree. So I'm one of the rare ones and they call me in sometimes and I speak to some undergrads there. And at first, they're like, oh, great, you know, someone's coming to talk to us about research, and they're already falling asleep before I even start talking, but then I tell them all the sexy things that we do, you know? So I'm like, well, I travel a lot, and I've gone to XYZ number of cities in the last year, and by the way, I got to go into people's homes, and I get to watch people testing yogurt, and I get to ask people about, you know, what their favorite um, TV program is, or why they tweet, and then their eyes light up, you know, because this is the kind of thing that they're already doing. A lot of people are already very naturally curious. They want to know why people like things and why they don't. They ask a lot of questions. Um, I think it's part of our, our DNA, like, generationally speaking, the more connected we are, the more interested we are. Why, why is she doing this and why is he wearing that? And when I tell them that that's what I do for my job, I go around and I talk to strangers and I ask them what they do and why they do it, then it becomes much more interesting than if you just frame it as research and insights and helping businesses make better decisions. That's kind of, you mentioned that before though, um, Nikki, when we were talking to these um, young, young um, students actually who are studying market, market research in um, in Spain and they were saying that actually a lot of the problem is the name you know it's research and the associations with that so we were suggesting maybe it's just a matter of rebranding you know and, and coming up with a more yeah sexy name that would reach out to young people you know maybe it is simply the title of it yeah would you, would you go along with that um, yeah, I definitely think that, that it could be something along the lines of the title and the branding of the industry as a whole. I know that at some point I had um, a couple of conversations with other researchers where we were brainstorming on how we could actually go about getting, um, you know, generating more interest in the industry, either among undergrads or among recent grads. Um, and we talked about the fact that our industry 
is a lot like the advertising industry, only, I mean, if you ask those of us who are passionate about what we do, um, I would say that I have all the perks of someone who works in the advertising industry but with a lot less downfall. And when you think about the advertising industry, it is already such a sexy industry. I mean, the hours are long. When you start out, the pay is not great, but everybody wants to get in there because they think, well, I'm doing something creative, I'm going to be doing something fun. Um, and it's and it's and it's really because the advertising industry is shaped that way. I mean, if you if you think about the series Mad Men on TV, for example, I mean it's so glorified, you know, the advertising world but it's not really like that whereas market research is a lot more like that um, you know we've got a lot of really creative people really creative projects to work on a lot of fun things to do um, it's not perfect it's not you know that there are obviously some things that are less less fun but certainly the branding of the industry as a whole comes across as a very cold scientific um, not humanized form of, of work and and that's a little bit inaccurate, I think. And, and another like recurring theme that it was it was the lack of or visibility generally of just what what you do as a market researcher, you know, what your day to day job involves. So what obviously you mentioned it before traveling and you know all the kind of sexy um, aspects of your your position. But what what other things you know to give give young people an insight? What what do you do day to day? Sure. Um, well, as I said at the in my little introduction, I work up quite a bit more on digital and online stuff in the last couple of years. So I do still travel quite a bit, um, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm doing a lot of logging into online communities and online boards. So, for example, I've got um, an online community going on right now with people from Switzerland and France and the United States, and I just log in every day and kind of get some conversations going with these people that I've never met and we're talking about technology so I mean I've I'm talking to guys who have started their own companies in order to build robots and women who are working in watchmaking factories and we're all just kind of exchanging ideas um, and then you know when I'm done with that I probably will um, field you know exchange some emails and stuff with clients and got a couple of reports that I'm working on and reports are always fun um, going back through and picking out like the really interesting pieces of what you've learned and what people have said over a recent project and and yeah I mean it's it's just I think the thing that I really like about working in this industry is that I don't do the same thing every day and I don't it's it's pretty difficult for me to get sick of my job because even working on the same project if I've got a community that's lasting for a month we're not talking about the same topic every day I'm not looking for the same insights every week um, I'm not talking to the same clients, so there's a lot of change and it keeps me on my toes. I'm interested in Nikki because from what you just said, you described obviously what we do day to day there. The big problem I suppose, um, at least in the UK, um, I gather, and I think it's the same in the States, although correct me if I'm wrong, is that there's a lot of graduates coming out who are doing kind of creatives, you know, who are doing um, humanity degrees or creative degrees and there's a lack of jobs. And from what you've just described there, this kind of seems like a really natural fit in a way for these kind of people so a would you say that's the case and, and b if, if so I suppose how, how do we channel these guys in? Yeah I would say it's the case I mean um, I think the first time I ever noticed I mean it's not completely rare but I think it was maybe four or five years ago the first time I ever worked with a qual researcher who had an anthropology degree and I was thinking it makes so much sense <laughs> everyone should mm -hmm. everyone should study anthropology if they're going to be going into this because it's such a great um, field and yeah there's lots of people studying psychology and sociology and um, of course you have some of those people who are graduating and they have really specific career paths that they plan on pursuing you know they want to be a, a, a a social worker or something like that and those people are kind of set but the other people who graduate and you know they feel like they have this really strong knowledge of how to connect with people and they don't really know what to do with it um, I think market research is definitely a natural fit for those people and I think in terms of us attracting people like that it's it's really about um, making this industry and making this type of work feel more like it's about the human human understanding and human connection. There's something about the research industry, even on the qualitative side, but especially on the quantitative side, that feels like we're taking the person out. 
it feels like we're studying, okay, here's the trends, here's the numbers, here's what you know this business should do or that business should do. But what we're really doing on a basic level is understanding people. And I think if we are able to communicate that more clearly as an industry, then people who are studying those you know, humanities would be, I think, a lot more drawn to, to work in market research. So what, what then, Nikki, did, what, what's your background then? Like, I, I sort of noticed I had a quick look at your um, LinkedIn and just you've sort of got did sort of social sciences as well, you know, have, have you found that's really has helped you, obviously, this insight into to how human humans work and think, has that really, yeah. really been an advantage in the field? I mean, I've, I'm, I've kind of cheated because I actually studied, in school, I studied um, communication with a concentration in advertising, and my senior year of college, I took a class on market research. So I ended up working in market research by accident, but I, I do think I'm one of the few that, you know, I, I actually saw the video that you guys have done already with the two students um, getting their master's in market research, and I think that's really great. I obviously didn't have that extensive of an education in the field. Um, but I had a lot of consumer behavior courses, consumer psychology courses. Um, my first year of school, I was actually a. Uh, <laughs> you feel free to edit this out. Um, my first year of school, I was actually a pre med um, student, and I was a double major psychology and biology um, because I was planning to become a psychiatrist. So it's sort of a natural fit that now, instead of being a psychiatrist who lets people sit on a couch and tell me their problems and I write them prescriptions, now they tell me their problems and I give them a check and <laughs> I make products better because of what they tell me. So, so yeah, that's my background, but I definitely think it was helpful. To broaden it out, um, when we've spoken to some market research, market research professionals, they've been saying that one of the big issues could be um, the credit that's kind of not given to research as an industry. So if you, you know, the whole process behind creating a product from from zero to to existing, that the research is is kind of invisible in a way, and that yeah. that, that element is, is is a bit of a problem. And if you, we could illuminate that a bit more in terms of qual and quant, then maybe the research on a whole could attract more of these people. Would you say that's the case? I definitely think that's something that's that's interesting. Is that the researcher? I always think of the researcher as sort of like the the man or the woman behind the curtain. You know, we, you know, we're kind of making things happen, but we're not really seen. And I think on the one hand, to highlight the role of market research or research in general, qual or quant, in the, you know, in the development process of a product or of a brand or whatever, could potentially be helpful um, in terms of attracting, you know, new talent to the industry. But the other thing, the other side of that coin is that, um, I think it's not necessarily the importance of the role that makes the job so fun for me. It's the the actual fulfillment of, you know, understanding people, finding the insight, connecting with people. Because I think a lot of, even for researchers, I think a lot of what happens is we play a part in, in you know, I might play a part in one phase of the product development process. Somebody else will play a part in another phase. So I don't actually see, you know, the completion of the product. So I think for us to to highlight, you know, oh, research is such an important part of product development or branding or whatever. It would, be, it could be great and it could be helpful, but on the other hand, it could be misleading and it could lead people to join the industry and then feel not really fulfilled because they'll say, well, I just did this survey and what's happening with this data? You know, how come I don't know what they're, what decisions they're going to make? Which is a problem for all of us researchers. We all want to know what happens with the insights we give to the CEOs. Um, but I almost think that it might be more beneficial to us to to focus on the actual fulfillment of what we learn as individuals in the process of learning on behalf of our CEOs and on behalf of our clients. So I think I learn a lot every on every project I work on, and that is enough for me to to keep wanting to do this for a long time. So what what would you say to a graduate then, um, Nikki, that's interested in um, the industry but you know doesn't know how to get their foot in the door? Essentially, what what advice would you give to them? Um, I would probably, <laughs> because I do this to myself, I would probably, you know, do a little bit of research on my own on, you know, for them and say, okay, you know, what area are you interested in living in? And then say, well, here's a bunch of market research, you know, companies that you could consider contacting in your area or um, whatever. <clears throat> but I think the other thing is, is that's really important for a graduate. I mean, most people I know that work in the industry kind of fell into it. It was almost accidental. It was definitely accidental for me. Most other people I know, it was accidental for them too. I don't know very many people that graduated and said, I want to be a market researcher. 
Um, so if there is some graduate out there who says, I want to work in market research, I'd probably just say, give me your phone number and I'll send it to everybody that I know because we're all looking for, we're all looking for, you know, fresh faces and new talent, but it's just a matter of, of them wanting to be a part of, of this industry, I think. I thought an interesting thing was that, um, when we were speaking to Skylar and Hope, the, the, the hangout that you referenced before, um, they said that in their class of about 60 or so, they asked them who wants to be part of market research, having studied market research, you know, and mm. um, and I think three of them put their hand up to say, you know, yeah, actually we want to do market research, and they thought that wasn't because they hadn't enjoyed what they studied, but just because they didn't know if what they studied actually fit into kind of market research category as the jobs kind of were there on the job site, for right. example. Um, so I suppose maybe this might be going back a little to what we were talking about before, but is it perhaps a problem with um, how individual jobs are kind of posted out there online, you know, and, and just the titles of them, and it's people just, just, just you know, not realizing that their skills would apply to that. Yeah, I think that's partially it. I mean, there's definitely been job postings that I've seen over the years um, that seem really stringent and really dry. Um, you know, we want someone who's going to be able to do this, this, and this. And the job itself is actually really fun and really creative, but it doesn't sound that way on paper. Um, the other thing, though, relevant to, to that point about only three of them raising their hand is I think this idea that I have might address two problems simultaneously. One is, well, the, the, the potential solution is there are a lot of companies out there who want um, new graduates and they want, you know, fresh blood and all of that, um, but they don't do internships. Or if they do internships, it's really rare. And for me, um, where I went to school, internship programs, full-time internship programs are mandatory. You have to do at least one full-time internship um, for one full semester before you can graduate. And I think that if the market research industry as a whole would start offering more internships to people who could potentially be interested, psychology majors, market research master's students, um, anthropology majors, anyone that has any any kind of education that could be relevant. If, if there were more internships where people could actually see what we do and follow, you know, oh, here are, you know, here's this survey data and here's, you know, these ethnographies that are happening and actually see what it feels like. I think it, it would kind of solve both of those problems. One is that, you know, graduate students need more education out of the door, and the other is that it will help them get a better sense of exactly what, you know, these jobs entail and whether or not it's for them and whether or not they're really interested. That's really interesting. I've actually never heard anybody make that point before. Now you say it, it's definitely true. Um, I just wonder then, is an element of it that some researchers just have to take a bit of a risk? Because one thing that I've heard a lot is that they don't want to give like experienced researchers don't want to give uh, a really important client to a young uh, researcher in case something goes wrong, obviously, because they just don't have the expertise. But you've just got to give, you've just got to risk it, you know, um, yeah. for these guys to to know the industry um, and to know if they want to be there. Well, I think as a researcher, I'm allowed to slightly talk a little bit of smack about researchers <laughs> because I think one of the problems that I've noticed from the beginning is that we always are making recommendations to our clients based on data which is saying listen this is where the opportunity is based on what I've learned based on the survey based on the interviews here's where the opportunity is you might need to take a risk we're telling our clients you might need to take a risk but we don't take risks as researchers we don't um, or more of us should is what I should say. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely an interesting point that you make, and I and I think you know I think that there's it's the same thing. I mean, an experienced researcher can make a mistake as well. So I I do think it all comes down to you know we 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 do our research and we think we know what's best, and then when it comes to handing something off to somebody else, we think well of course you don't know what's best because you haven't been doing this as long as I have. Um, yeah. So it's a bit of a catch twenty two that we we build ourselves into.